IU football opened the 2009 season on Thursday inside the new and improved Memorial Stadium. Could the new atmosphere help the Hoosiers to their first win of the season? The Indiana men's soccer team hosted the Adidas IU Credit Union Classic over the weekend and faced number one St. John's and number three Wake Forest. Does IU have what it takes to compete with the top teams in the country? IU Volleyball also played host to a slew of teams in the Adidas Classic this weekend at the University Gym. Can this young squad dominate in these early matchups? All this and more on this jam-packed edition of Hoosier Sports Night. Welcome to Hoosier Sports Night. I'm Rachel Benson alongside Nick LaGrange. It's been a long summer, but we're back here with uh, Hoosier Sports Night. It's good to be back, Rachel. Thursday marked the beginning of the 2009 football season for Indiana, and the fans came in herds to watch the Hoosiers face the Eastern Kentucky Colonels. Fans also came to witness the final product of the North End Zone facility, a 138,000 square foot addition to Memorial Stadium. On the field, IU was led by quarterback Ben Chappell, who started for the first time since the Hoosiers were crushed by Wisconsin last season. And here we go, the first game of the 09 season. Bill Lynch looking on as his Hoosiers take on Eastern Kentucky. First play, handoff to Darius Willis up the middle, and he puts it on the ground. Patrick McClellan of Eastern Kentucky recovers. Possession for Eastern Kentucky. Watts running to the back of the end zone. Knocked down, he puts it on the ground. Ball is loose. Ball looks to be knocked out of bounds at the two-yard line, but wait, the referee says that's a safety. Next possession, Ben Chappell drops back, finds Tandon Doss over the middle of the field. He's wearing number two. Who's that remind you of? I think that's Thigpen. Thigpen, like moves, gets his way down to the 35-yard line. Next, next play, Trey Burgess runs in for the touchdown from the two-yard line. Puts the Hoosiers up 9-0. Now, next possession for Eastern Kentucky. The quarterback finds Garrett Phelps, and Phelps is running loose. He's at the 20. He's at the 10. That's a touchdown. Eastern Kentucky on the board finally, 6-9. The fans are loving it. Now the Hoosiers up 9-6. Chapel drops back. He finds the big man, number 88, DeMarlo Belcher on the sideline. But did he catch it in bounds? Another look. One foot down. Possession. That's a catch, ladies and gentlemen. We move on to the next play where Ben Chapel looking deep again for who else? It's DeMarlo Belcher at the back of the end zone for the score. Hoosiers go up 19-7, be 19-10 at the end of the first half. Now, beginning of the second half, we got a new quarterback in for Eastern Kentucky. His name's TJ Pryor. He finds Shannon Davis down the sideline for a big gain. Now, Eastern Kentucky puts Cody Watts back in the game, and he finds Evan Cromer down the field for another big gain. Now, the Colonel's on the move at the five-yard line. Watts on the QB draw gets to the three, and he puts it on the ground. The Hoosiers recover. Ball was knocked loose by receiver turn corner Ray Fisher. Now, last play of the game, Pryor in the shotgun, throws it deep, it's high enough, it's long enough, up for number nine, Orlandis Harris, and he can't hang on to it. That's the end of the ball game. Hoosiers going to win 19 to 13. Harris consoled at the end by his receivers coach, Ben Hodges. Well, it was a great win for us. Uh, it wasn't a thing of beauty at times, but uh, anytime you can win the opener, that's really big. Pretty is one thing Thursday night's win was not. But the Hoosiers, coming off a dismal 3-9 2008 season, held on and defeated Eastern Kentucky 19-13. Uh, it went okay. You know, it was a win. Uh, Eastern Kentucky played a really good football game, and, uh, you know, we could have done a few things better, but uh, it's a win. While there were smiles in the locker room after a job well done, reality set in with a look at the stat sheet. The Colonel's defense held the Hoosiers to only 73 rushing yards during the game, bringing competition to the table from a Division I AA school. The biggest thing that uh, concerned us going into it is when you play a team that, in a program that wins as much as they do on a consistent basis, they always think they're going to win. and uh, They're, they're going to hang around. You've got you to play really well to put them away, and, and we didn't do that. New to the Indiana offense this season is the use of the pistol formation, a hybrid between the shotgun and typical single back offenses that Indiana has used in the past. However, Thursday night's run game did not have the biggest impact on the team's win. Both Coach Lynch and the players are comfortable with their new offensive style. At first we didn't know really know what they was going to play against us. Um, once we got in there and they seen that they were bringing people in the box and they really were trying to take away the running game. 
And so that's when uh, Coach Canada started calling some more play action plays and some passing game. And just, that was really, we just took what they gave us, basically. Particularly in the first half, we used a lot of clock and kept their offense off the field. And it did create some one-on-one -on -one situations on the outside. And, and that's part of what we're trying to do because we know Belcher and uh, uh, Doss and, and uh, Mitchell Evans and, and uh, Terrence Turner are pretty good football players. So if we can get them one-on-one, -on -one, that helps. And, and running the ball out of those formations helped us do that. For now, the Hoosiers stand victorious and 1-0 with a very difficult schedule ahead of them. Relying on and mastering the new pistol offense is a tough task at hand, but for RU, it's a whole new year with a whole new game plan. At Memorial Stadium, I'm Courtney Cronin, Hoosier Sports Night. In the debut of the pistol formation offense, Chapel completed 27 of 36 passes and threw for 326 yards. The Hoosiers found themselves in trouble with the run game being held to only 73 yards by Eastern Kentucky. However, it was IU's receiving core that helped them along to victory with the combination of Tandon Doss's 125 receiving yards and DeMarlo Belcher's 33-yard touchdown reception. Here's the extremely attractive Lucas Mayer with more on the wide receiver duo. Despite the assumption that Indiana would do a great deal of running against Eastern Kentucky, sophomores Tandon Doss and DeMarlo Belcher put on a show and led the Hoosiers to victory. Doss and Belcher are really good players. I thought they made some great plays. And uh, again, we'll go back and grade it. They've, I'm sure there were some mistakes in there too, but I think uh, they've, they've made great progress from playing as true freshmen to sophomores. They look like, they look like uh, what they're supposed to look like in the Big Ten out there, I think, and, and they played that way. Everybody knows we have a good offense, but we just got to get out there. Um, the receivers got to keep making plays, and uh, just got to step up when your time's called and do what you got to do. We had a good camp. Uh, receivers, definitely. Uh, probably the best receivers we had here in a while, so I think we did pretty good. Uh, everybody's going to get a chance to touch the ball and make some plays. So we all we all be good this year. Um, I guess I was just open. You know, any of our play, or any of our receivers can do that. Um, it's depend on where you at, what coverage it is. So uh, they was playing soft. Uh, they didn't want to come up and press. So they they weren't biting on none of our quick stuff. So we thought we'd go deep, and they fell for it. Deep post. Uh, a win is a win. We don't care how much we won by. When we cover is three points, uh, one point, uh, a win is a win, so we're happy with that. Uh, yeah, it's a win. Um, I'm not really satisfied right now. I'm kind of disappointed. Um, I know I could have made some more plays and helped the offense a little bit better, help our defense stay off the field, but a win's a win, but I'm happy with it. So. Bill Lynch and the rest of the IU football team hope that Belcher and Doss can continue to be a one-two punch that will strike fear into opponents across the Big Ten. From Memorial Stadium, I'm Lucas Mayer, Hoosier Sports Night. Thursday's attendance marked the highest home opener crowd since 1997, as over 36,000 fans came out to cheer on the Hoosiers to victory. As Coach Lynch and several players have stated, the fans played a huge role in the win and gave the team the boost they needed to start off the season on the right foot. But without the help of linebacker Will Patterson and the IU defense as a whole, the outcome might have not looked as hopeful for the Hoosiers. Kate Sunny has more from Memorial Stadium. Getting fans into the stadium. It's been one of Fred Glass's number one priorities since being named the new athletic director last year, and his plan seems to have worked. Over 36,000 filled Memorial Stadium for IU's opener against Eastern Kentucky, and with those fans came a new intensity that was felt by the entire football team. The game began with the freshman class running out onto the football field, fireworks, and the loud and proud student section chanting the IU fight song. And it didn't take long for Coach Lynch to realize the effect the crowd was going to have on the game. Uh, the students were unbelievable tonight. Uh, and I, and I, the crowd was great, but I really, the student, um, I don't know how many were here, but that was, that was tremendous. I mean, that's... And uh, Fred Glass and his staff have worked so hard to, to get the students out, and uh, they came. And it's, it's a different atmosphere. And that atmosphere was seen early in the game. After I used Darius Willis fumbled, EKU obtained possession deep in their own territory on the north end of the field. The noise from the fans helped lead to an EKU fumble in the end zone, resulting in a safety. After that, the defense was jacked. Hard hits came from Will Patterson, Nick Polk and Matt Mayberry throughout the first half. Ray Fisher joined them in the second half with five tackles of his own. Big crowd tonight. Big crowd. I think 
it's going to be like this for the rest of the season. It's, it's a new experience out there. We got a lot of stuff where to keep all the fans into it, into the game. We're going to be all right. With three more games being broadcast on the Big Ten Network this year, the football team hopes to have just as much support as they did for their opening game. An opening game which for now proved that if you build it, they will come. From Memorial Stadium, I'm Kate Senny. Who's your sports night? Coming up after the break, we'll head out to Bill Armstrong Stadium where the men's soccer team played St. John's and Wake Forest over the weekend. And to round things out, we'll kick it across campus to the Adidas Classic Volleyball Tournament held at IU's University Gym. Stay tuned for more Hoosier Sports Night after the break.